Okay, welcome to a second Blender tutorial on animation. Okay, this is going to look at a couple of other things. Um, we've already seen that we've made this cube um, go along, go up, and go back, and move back down again. Um, but we are going to do a few extra little things to this. We're going to animate something apart from the movement and rotation and scale and stuff. Okay, material. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be just doing, um, I'm basically proving that here, we can go through and animate almost anything. Right, material right here. We're going to do a, um, a change of color for this object. If you're unsure about how to change the color of an object, please go back to the Blender tutorial that we've already done previously on materials. What I've done right now is drag it all the color all the way up, 100% white. And I'm just going to get this intensity and drag it up too. Right. You know before, we out here pressed the I key while our cube was selected and we can go through and animate any one of these. Well, we can also do that to this color over here. While my mouse is hovering over this color patch, I can go through and do two things. I could right click it and see all these extra little things in here. Ooh. The only one I'm really interested in is this insert keyframe. But there's also a quick way. You know how over here I could press the I key? Well, as long as my mouse is hovering over the thing that I want to animate, I can press the I key here too. I just did it there. You may have noticed right down here, the cube that was white, the name, at keyframe one, suddenly turned orange. That's a hint that it's being keyframed. So, at frame one, if I move this now, we should see that there is, in fact, Yes, there is. There's a little yellow indication there that I've added a keyframe. Right, here we go. I'm going to make a brand new color. I'm going to make the red zero. That's the color if there's no red. I'm going to make the green zero. That's the color if there's no green. It means there's only blue left. Done. Right, I'm out here now. I am going to right click and insert keyframe. Of course, I could have just pressed the I key. All good. I'm going to zip over here to 80. I'm going to go through and change the color. This time I'm going to get rid of the blue, zero blue, and make it all green, one green. Of course, I could have just grabbed and dragged it around as well. That would have been fine. Right, um, what was I doing? Oh yes, I was making a keyframe for green. And then I'm dragging it to 120. And I'm going to go in here. I'm going to make the green zero, and make the red 100%. Wasn't that beautiful? Click, left click, and drag. Add a keyframe, right click, or press the I key, and there, we've got it. Now, if I go through and click on the green timeline, you can see the way it's morphing its way through. I didn't just have to do colors then. I could have changed the specular intensity. Like back here at one, I could have dragged that all the way down to zero. See, there's no shine. Okay. I can go now into there and I can right click it and go insert keyframe. I can go all the way up to 120. And I can rip that up to 100% shininess and go insert keyframe. And now our specular is also animated. Right back at the beginning, you'll see there's no shine on my ball. And at the top, up here, there is full shine. I can go through and do exact same thing to emit. Okay, um, which I'll let's say I'll leave that. Oopsie, as zero up here on 120, and at one, I'll make it. Oopsie, not two. Okay, at one, and I'll make it emit light. In other words, glow. Oops, that was the wrong button. That's the button I was looking for right there. Ooh glowingness. Right click, insert driver. So as you can see, anything can be animated. Not anything, but most things can be animated over time. Okay, that's good. That's enough of that. I think we've got the picture. Okay, what we're going to do now is a little bit of um, playing around with the, um, with the graphs that we saw last time. Let's drag that out of the way. In fact, let's go up here and we'll go to the animation setup. So we've got materials at the top. And as you can see, under our material for this cube here, I've been messing around with the colors. 
I've been messing around with the specula and I'm messing around with the image. I'm going to get this thing here and I'm going to delete it. How do you do that? Well, I went through and I clicked it, left click or right click, both works, and then I pressed the X key and bam, it went away. Control Z, I'll bring it back. Right, now over here I'm going to press the home key just to spread things out. There are all the little commands I've given it. I've told the colors to change and I've told them to change four times. And I've told the spec to change at the beginning and at the end. And it morphed its way through that. Right. What I'm going to do is show something really cool. I'm going to go through and go shift space bar here. Now, as you can see here, when I press the home key, it zoomed it into all the commands that I've given it. What I can do, I can roll my mouse button, just like I would in a middle mouse button that is, in the real world. And I can also, which one is it again? Oh, nice. oh by the way, that's the same as going control, middle mouse button, that zooms in and out. Alt, middle mouse button, no sorry, shift, middle mouse button, we'll now move it around. So shift, middle mouse button, I'm dragging it around just like I would in the real world. Okay, so I'm dragging around, dragging around. Now, what I can do is go right click and I've selected the red color. I can go shift, right click, shift, right click, shift, right click and select everything I want to. Right, as we saw, I think it was in the previous tutorial, I can go shift D just like in the real world and I have gone through now and I've duplicated that those instructions of color changes. So at the very, very end, I can go over here. I can see down, down the bottom, I can see exactly where I am. And I can go and dump those over there. And I've now got my instructions put along there. What instructions you may say? Well, all these instructions I gave at the beginning to be all these colors and all the specular, it's returning to that at the very, very end. Let's see what happens. So, at the beginning, it's white and it's um, non-shiny. Then by the time it gets to um, 120, which was the last instruction, it's turned red and shiny. And then as we go further across, it's turning back to white and non-shiny again. Those same instructions that I gave at the very, very beginning. Now I didn't have to copy and duplicate all those across, I just might have wanted to copy and duplicate the specular across and that would have been fine. If I wanted to, I could go through, shift, spacebar, and select a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, um, okay, B for border select. I can go through and select all of those guys there, I can't remember what those were, and I can duplicate them, shift D, and drag, oopsie, oh bother. See how I had those last ones selected as well? I have to press the A key first to unselect them all. I then go B for border select. Because border select always makes an additional selection. Okay, shift D to duplicate and then drag them out the end. Okay, that's all good. What I can also do is this. I can scale these, pressing the S key. I am now making them smaller and smaller, in other words, closer together. I'm not actually changing the values in here, I'm just changing where they're placed on the timeline. Then I can press the G key and grab and drag them around. So I can actually give those same instructions that were um, over here that I selected. I shrunk, scaled down where they are in the timeline, and then I press the G key and grabbed it around. If I press the R key, nothing happens up here. Well, not the same sort of thing. Because I can't rotate those around. There's no rotation ability there. It's a straight two-dimensional backwards and forwards. Maybe one-dimensional. Who cares? Thing. Okay. Completely different things happen in, shift, spacebar, the graph. If I went and scaled things inside here, press the S key, then things actually do go up and down. I can change the amount of shininess or the amount of red, green and blue that I've got. Or if I wanted to scale it only in one direction, I could press the X key. So I'm only scaling it 
along the X axis, or I could press the Y key and only scale in the up and down axis. Okay, I hope I haven't gone too fast then. I'm out of time. I have to leave you with that. Have an excellent day. I'll see you later.